Well, folks, in today's video, we're gonna be unboxing and testing out what quite possibly is the strangest HO scale locomotive I've ever seen before. I found this thing on eBay a few months ago when I was just browsing around. The listing kind of stood out to me, and you'll see why soon enough, but uh, in short, it's a locomotive which appears to have been made out of possibly three others and a bunch of different brass parts. It's certainly not good by any means, in fact, I'd argue it's quite cursed looking. But uh, curiosity really got the better of me with this one, and I was really intent on buying it. Now, there was one caveat, which is that the seller wanted $250 American for this thing, which is certainly a price that I was not willing to pay for it, and nor was anybody else, because it stayed up there for two months. But uh, anyways, at the end of the listing, I decided to lowball them, I think for $35, which was overpriced, but uh, curiosity really got the better of me. Anyways, they took the offer, and... Uh, I now have it in my possession and can show all of you just what this is all about. Um, I really don't know what to expect. Apparently it is in working order. Given what I've already seen, I kind of am curious to see what that's actually going to be. But uh, I guess don't judge a book by its cover. So let's crack this thing open and see what exactly we're dealing with and maybe make any necessary repairs. This thing was so unusual, it apparently caught the interest of Canadian border security, which is already kind of a red flag. It's a nice fancy wooden box like this, you might be tricked into thinking that there's something very high-end and pleasant on the inside. Let's open it up and see. I feel like I'm opening up something which was created in Frankenstein's lab. Maybe it was, I don't know. <laughs> yep. And there it is. Looks to have been uh, damaged a little bit in shipping, but yep. They really uh, don't make them like this. <laughs> and judging by all the loose bits in the bag, which were not here when I bought it, I think that either UPS or Canadian Border Services took it upon themselves to try to destroy this thing, but uh, presumably they got too scared looking at it and just decided to throw it back in the bag. Now, in terms of parts, we've got a body off what appears to be a River Aussie locomotive of some kind. Got a uh, custom-made boiler with some kind of a lighting system. And this thing in all of its terrifyingness. The cab appears to have been created from an Ather and Hustler. The tender appears to be created from a Bachman Overland steam locomotive set. And uh, it's sitting on the chassis of what I think was at one point a lit caboose. Uh, we've got some custom uh, electrical work down here. And the whole thing appears to be held together with wood. I really can't tell what the intention of the creator is. Maybe it's supposed to be some sort of a steampunk thing. It's certainly not modeled after anything in particular. Uh, the funny thing is, you know, despite how it looks, there are sections of it where, like, there was a bit of craftsmanship put in here. I mean, that soldering is actually, you know, fairly clean in my opinion. So somebody, you know, did put some care into it, but... Uh, I, I just I just can't tell what the the end goal with all of it is. Well, I think that's enough joking around. Let's uh, take this thing over to the track and uh, see if it actually runs or not. So just as I'm bringing this thing over to uh, test it out, the headlight falls out of it, and I assume it's just a decoration, seeing that it was only held in by some neodymium magnets. But oh no no, check this out. It's just uh, so much better. The inside of this thing is terrifying, by the way. It looks like the mouth of a muskie, but uh, that's all right. We'll just uh, kind of stuff that in there and just send it. All right, well, I think we're ready to rock and roll here. Oh. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, man. Well, the seller wasn't lying, it does seem to run, although uh, wheels keep derailing. So first things first, this uh, rear set of wheels is not sitting on the track correctly. Let's see, will it sit on the bench? Okay, so that was a pretty simple fix. I think it just needed uh, to be bent back into place a little bit. This metal can warp pretty easily, so we'll let that slide. Now on to some other issues. This is not so good. I don't even know what's holding all this together. Not much, apparently. 
So unfortunately, the uh, coupler pocket down here does not want to go back into place because somebody really rallied this bar right here. So I think I'm just going to let this dry and uh, stick it back on there kind of as is. I mean, it's slightly improved. At least it's not going to mess with these wheels anymore. Uh, now onto some other issues I can see. So I guess the idea is that you just kind of, you know, work the bulb into place beforehand and then you uh, tighten it up while it's inside. We'll see if these brackets can even hold the front of the locomotive together anymore. Okay, I've got one in here and now the other one's come back out. Okay, I think that that is looking a little bit better. I think I see a, uh, a self-tapper in this locomotive's future for the drawbar there. Just test to make sure things are on the same ground. I should have checked in before. I hadn't even thought of that. So, uh, it's not loving the self-tapper. Oh yeah, that's much happier. So now that this thing is uh, working to some extent, I think the biggest improvement that could be made to it is some paint, because, uh, you know, like all this work up here is not horrible, but you've got like, you know, one tone of paint right here, and then another, and then you've got the color of the brass. Uh, I think there's just a little too much going on, and that might tidy it up a little bit. All right, so I got all the painting done. I got a little carried away, as you can see, so I'm uh, going to have to clean up a few contacts before we can go about running this again. Well, it's now a couple days later, and I unfortunately got a little too late to keep talking while I was filming and working on this thing, so I did some work off camera, and I've got some good news and some pretty bad news. The evidence is right here, but uh, anyways, I'll start with the good news, which is that while I was working on it, I thought that all the plastic here was completely gone. It turns out in transit, it had just kind of got jammed inside the tender, so I was able to pull that back out and uh, also get some of the plastic glued back on here. So with a bit of paint, that's going to look a lot better. I got all the uh, wheels all sorted out, so they're uh, all looking all nice and shiny again, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, the rear truck uh, crumbled in my hands, so I had to replace that with with this plastic one but uh, it should get the job done and it looks pretty similar frankly now on to the bad news yeah this is not so good so basically what happened was after i shut the camera off i was cleaning the wheels everything was going fine and then the locomotive locked up on me and I should have known better, because these engines are not supposed to be operated upside down. Sometimes these parts can move in ways they're not supposed to, and that happened. So this locked up and locked the entire drive. So I was trying to figure out what was going on. I was playing around with it a little bit, and then I noticed this. So I popped it back into place. I tried uh, turning over the wheels again, and then I noticed that the driver on this side became unquartered. So I figured uh, I must have shed a screw. So I looked over here and that's when I noticed that this piece had rallied itself right through the plastic on this wheel. In all my years of working on River Rossi locomotives, I've never seen this happen before. I have seen them shed screws before, but this is really out of the ordinary and uh, frankly I'm not really sure what to do about it because uh, this is completely ruined. Now I went digging through my spare parts to see if I could find anything to replace this wheel and this is the closest thing I found. It does look pretty similar but it's from a Mahano slash IHC locomotive which I think is also part of AHM so it probably does have some River Rossi roots but the parts are not exactly the same so I'm really not sure if we'll be able to pull this wheel out and add it on there. But it's the only chance we have at this point of getting this locomotive working again. I think at this point I've really paddled myself up a particular creek and lost the paddle. So uh, we'll have to try this. This is attached a lot better than I was expecting. 
which is good, but it is making things a little more difficult. So they look around the same diameter. The only major difference is that the River Rossi one has uh, slightly bigger flanges. I don't think that that's going to matter. Looks like I will have to uh, drill this out a little bit for it to fit in there, though. I really don't like where this whole project has headed. So I just bored this out a little bit, so I'll try to get it into place. Now, this does matter because it will affect the quartering. Well, it looks about right to me. The bolt threaded in the existing hole pretty well, so we're just going to pretend that that's a self-tapper. And now we're going to see if this thing will actually fire up. I mean, I've done some dodgy repairs on dodgy locomotives before, but this might top them all. Let's see if it even works. I mean, it doesn't love it. That's not perfectly quartered you can hear it binding ever so slightly but it is working now on to other things i want to tackle the other day when i was working on this thing i noticed something kind of funny which is that power is not getting from this truck to the locomotive and you would think with a metal frame like this oh it's no problem you know they're they're both hooked up to the same ground i don't know what the previous owner did but you can see that there's this piece of metal right here which is actually connected to this wire uh, up here so um the power comes through here and you know you'd think if this was attached to this frame it would just flow backwards up through that wire but they put an insulator around the screw so even if it's connected to this power still can't flow that way so i think what i need to do is run a jumper wire from this screw right here and we'll solder that onto this piece of metal because at the moment this thing is only picking up power through these two wheels so frankly i'm surprised it was even able to run at all Nice. Okay, so now this thing has uh, all-wheel pickup. Well, half-wheel pickup. So now the next thing I want to tackle is this and the lighting system. I'm not a huge fan of this, to be honest. I find this surrounded boiler just looks a little bit strange. I mean, I know the whole engine does, but uh, I'm just not wild about it. And I'm also not too crazy about this whole battery-powered lighting system. I'd really like something that's hardwired into the locomotive. So I'm thinking we scrap both those parts and add this. This was off a junked uh, consolidation Bachman locomotive, which I bought a few years ago for $5. And I'm thinking, you know, it could make this engine look... Uh, at least half decent. It's not going to be perfect, but I do consider this an improvement, especially if we uh, paint it to match. But before we attach this on, I also got this 12 volt bulb, and uh, I think it should work pretty well. We'll install it up front here, and there's already some plastic to capture the light. It's not going to be super bright, but I like this way more than the uh, previous system. Okay, that doesn't seem to be working so well, so I've got a plan. Aha, serenity. See, now what we do, just connect it all together and uh, should just go right on through. Now, I just need to solder these wires onto the tabs of the motor and it's good to go. All right, I got that all soldered up, so we'll see if the light even works now. Yes, it does. All right, now I'll just add on our new fixture here, and I think it's going to look just fine. Well, it's now a while later, and I did a little bit more work off camera. The first thing I did was I added a little bit of glue to the axle, just so that it doesn't slip out of place and become unquartered again. I also uh, recorded this just so that it would run a little bit better, so I'm pretty happy with how that's looking now. I also added a jumper wire, which goes from the crossbar directly to the motor, because while I was doing the quartering, it was having some intermittent power issues, which I really didn't like. I think it's uh, this uh, connection here with the crossbar, probably because I added paint to it, but uh, in any case, that fixes that. Then over on the front, you'll notice some differences. You can see that I moved the light from the center to the top. I just didn't like how it looked in the middle there. I think that this looks a lot better. I mean, it's still a very strange locomotive, but... I don't know, it definitely uh, adds something to it, which I think makes it look slightly better. 
And then I filled in the hole where the light used to be with some CA and baking soda, and that seems to work pretty well once I add some paint. I think it'll be hard to see that. I even uh, ran the lens right down here so that the bulb can shine light up into the headlight, so hopefully that will work. And then finally, there is a plow left over from the scrap AHM frame, so I figured, hey, why not throw it on here and just add a little bit more detail. So I think at this point what I want to do is uh, paint all of the components which haven't been yet. So I'll have to add some paint to this wheel, add some to the pilot or cow catcher, and to the front of the boiler, as well as adding some to this rear truck over here. I'm going to remove some of the wheels just so I don't get paint on them again, because uh, removing the paint the first time was kind of a pain in the neck. I also sanded off the top of this bolt right here just because I'm pretty sure it was snagging a little bit on the front truck which might have been causing some derailing issues so that's just another thing I figured I'd tackle. I'm going to try to preserve this lens as best I can as well here. All right, well, the painting's all done now. I'm pretty happy with how it's looking. I really wish I didn't have to uh, paint that wheel the way I did, but sometimes you gotta crack an egg to make an omelet, and I think that this has turned out okay because uh, this is not the conductive side. I still tried to get any excess paint off because I don't want that getting on my track. But uh, other than that, I think we'll throw the wheels back on and uh, actually try to run this thing. Oh, I also uh, tried to put some oil in here before I uh, painted it, so hopefully it won't uh, gum any of that up either. All right, let's take this thing over to the track and see if our efforts have paid off. I really hope this thing works okay after all the effort that's been put into it. I mean, I know it did run to some extent right out of the box and a little bit on the bench, but most of that was before I went covering everything with paint and uh, rallying the rear wheel right off the locomotive and replacing it with a random AHM part. So I don't know, the results on the track might be a little bit different here, but let's give it some power. Hey, look at that, it actually works. It doesn't even seem to be running half bad. I can still hear a little bit of ticking, but I think that the recordering I did on the bench uh, made quite a big difference there. So yeah, that's fantastic. See right here too, the current draw is right where it should be for a River Rossi locomotive. So this thing is actually kind of healthy still, at least the motor is. Anyways, what I really want to see now is can it actually pull some cars. Well, it seems to be doing a pretty good job so far with this four car consist. I know it's not a terribly heavy train, but I just want to kind of test it out. I'll probably add a couple more cars on in a minute. Well, I just added some more cars on, so we're now up to nine, and it seems to be handling it just fine. It is slipping a little bit on this one side of the layout, but that's kind of to be expected. These River Rossi steamers were never really known for having terrific pulling capacity, so I think this is quite acceptable.
Well, folks, I think that that's going to be about it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I had a lot of fun working on this thing, and I'm pretty happy with the results. It's certainly one of the strangest projects I think I've ever had here on the channel, and I don't think I made it any less unusual. Some people like to collect brass locomotives, others die cast, so painting this copper maybe was not the best choice, but it was never going to be a normal locomotive, so I figured, hey, why not kind of do something a little bit different? And uh, I think with the new boiler front headlight, and plow it looks okay you know and uh, it even runs half decent so I'm a pretty happy camper at one point I was kind of questioning whether or not this thing was gonna be going into the garbage bin after that wheel destroyed itself so I guess we'll uh, we'll call this one a success anyways with that I just want to thank you all so much for watching